uh, prodigal. It's called a prodigal. Yeah. Sean, so if I can get you just to be a little bit more directional into the. Yep. Yeah, because it's really sensitive. So okay. Thanks. Got it. <laughs> it's called prodigal. It's called prodigal. Yeah. Prodigal. And I saw a, a photo of you, long hair. Oh what yeah. Was that right. Uh, well, for the character that I played for Prodigal, um, they uh, they gave me a lot of tattoos and put. Uh, Hair extensions in, and uh, I, you know that's one of the great things about acting too. I love getting to, you know, play parts, try looks out that I, I probably never would do in my real life. Um, I, I don't think I ever get a tattoo, but I love the idea of having one. And I'm actually doing a film that I start uh, May 13th in Los Angeles, uh, which is called My Trip to the Dark Side. And they made these huge like yakuza tattoos, like the Japanese mafia wears, yeah. that cover like both of my arms, and it's. I kind of like playing dress up, it's fun. What's the, um, what's the situation like for someone like you who's been in two iconic shows, seen globally, Bold and Beautiful, one hour, to, to go out and be looking for work when, you know, I mean, we, we talk about typecasting, but you're seen around the world, and so people have a very fixed idea about you when I found out you did comedy. I mean, Deacon Sharp has no sense of humor. Oh, <laughs> right? I, I disagree. I think Deacon Sharp's got a great sense of humor. Yeah. Oh, I think he's, uh, you know, le less so on Young and the Restless, but That's I, all I, I think that, him on, yeah. you know, I, I think that one of the great things about Deacon is, you know, he's not he's not a straight up villain, and he's certainly not a uh, a hero. Um, I think he's more of kind of a an anti hero, and uh, I, I think that he's got a really good sense of humor. Um, but you know, you you mentioned um, what it's like, you know, when you do two shows that are very recognizable. I mean, Bold and Beautiful is in 110 countries, yeah, and that's that's incredible, and that's opened up some really great opportunities for me. I actually um, worked extensively in Italy. Uh, I was doing a film in Naples for three months, and then I got this crazy phone call. Uh, somebody said to me, would you like to do Bailando con la Stella? And I said, what is Bailando con la Stella? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, it turns out it's, it's Dancing with the Stars. So oh, I got to do the Italian no. version of Dancing with the Stars, right. which um, not quite the same um, cachet as doing in the United States. It's a little like doing American Idol in Barbados. But, um, uh, no, it was great. And I wound up living in uh, Rome for seven months, which was a lot of fun. But you know, Yes, I've done I've done a lot of work and been very fortunate. But you know, among actors in Los Angeles, we sort of have a saying that unless you're Tom Cruise or Brad Pitt, you're yeah. just another actor out there trying to get a job. And uh, and that's true. You know, I mean, the, the economy has has really affected um, my business, um, and it's made it much more difficult, I think, to find work. I've been very fortunate um, that uh, you know, in the past couple of months, I've booked a few films. Right? Um, but the most successful creative people, anyway, are creating their own opportunities. Uh, you, yeah. have, you have to. You're expanding into the world of comedy. You're here in town to, to do your act. I'm doing. Uh, I'm doing a show this evening uh, at Light, which is over on Peter Street. Okay. And uh, right. Yep. Yep. Um, and you know, I've also um, uh, been working as a producer for probably I don't know, close to 15 years. I've, I've produced uh, five films, one of which uh, we actually shot in Montreal. It was it was called Chasing Holden. And distributed by Lionsgate, and I, I wrote it as well, and I think, you know, it, the business has become so difficult that you really need to wear multiple hats and become, you know, sort of like a multi hybrid um, and so for me, uh, I write, I act, uh, and I produce, and generally speaking, you know, maybe if the, if, the, if the acting jobs aren't coming quite as freely and quickly, I've always got something going on on the producing side, and so, you know. Well, maybe that explains, too, uh, I was reading your, your Twitter page, and you felt obviously um, the need to say, you know what, I keep hearing I was fired from doing the restless, I just want to set the record straight. Because yeah. you're busy making all these things happen for yourself and these good life sounds really, really good and you don't know, get a bug up your ass like that. You know, you yeah, I, that, that, was, that, was unfortunate, that was unfortunate that uh, <clears throat> somehow that rumor um, started to, uh, to catch on like wildfire and you know, I think when you're an actor and you're, you're in the public eye, somewhat, there's a certain amount of um, a certain amount of stuff like that that you just have to sort of let roll off your back. But then there also comes a point in time when you know, yeah, I'm gonna give you somebody else. Yeah, yeah, because if something like that is, is potentially detrimental to my ability to totally. go out and find other work. As you're trying to make things happen for it, yourself, it, that could tell that you were exactly. fired. You weren't. So, I wasn't. I wanted to ask you um, about. The industry of soap operas, and, and I'm sure you're, you're hearing more than I even hear about the 
historic life they have left? Or do you agree with that? Well, um, yes and no. Um, I think what's I'll happened. Kill myself is, if no, 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 no. There's been, stuff. Well, I don't think I don't think YNR is in any imminent danger of getting canceled. Um, I think what happened was there was a contraction in the business, and some of the shows that had weaker numbers, um, obviously, it was like a, you know a culling of the herd. I mean, yep. they they you know the strongest uh, survive. Um, with the advent of reality television and and various talk shows, it's become less expensive to produce mm -hmm. those shows. And at the end of the day, and you know. Uh, I'm probably will get in trouble for saying this. You know, when you work in television, really what you're doing is you're creating product that's fodder to, to sell television Absolutely. commercials. I mean, the Food business, radio. exactly. You know, you know, we are we are yeah. the stuff that goes in to attract the numbers that ultimately lets the people uh, in, in the sales for force sell, sell for the advertisers. Um, and I think you know, thank goodness that Young and the Restless um, still is putting up pretty good numbers. Not necessarily compared to how they were maybe a few years ago, but it still um, allows Young and the Restless to survive. Uh, Bold and Beautiful is a, a different deal because it's syndicated in so many other countries in the world that um, I, you know, I can't imagine that Bold and Beautiful is going to go anywhere. But there has been definitely an overall contraction in the business where um, some of the shows have, have given way to reality. Well, not reality so much because that's on uh, during the nighttime, but certainly uh, talk shows. Victoria Rao was on last week with us, and she had oh, something. She's, great. she's so great, so smart. Yeah. Um, she had something very similar to say. Um, she was saying it's about selling pine salt. She's absolutely it's about right. Selling pine yeah. salt. Yeah. But what are you? Are you following um, her book and her marketing efforts and the whole Michelle Stafford spit take drama that's been coming out over the last say ten days? Yeah. You're aware of that? No. <laughs> I, I, Do I, you I, avoid that kind of stuff? I, I don't even know what you're talking. Saturated. I'm not even familiar with what you're talking about. There was a spit take years ago in a scene, and Victoria Rowell's now coming out and saying that everyone knew about this spit take, except for her, and apparently there was mitigation between Michelle Stafford and Sony and Victoria Rowell, and it's gotten very aggressive. When you say spit take, what do you, what do you mean? Uh, uh, in as much as Michelle Stafford was taking a drink. Oh, like a, a real spit take? Yeah, a real spit take. Uh -huh. um, and it and wound up on Victoria Rowell's face. You can see it on YouTube. She played it right through, but after, they cut, all hell broke loose, and now all this is coming to the surface. And it's interesting reading, obviously, but when you're, when you're on a set like that... I don't, I don't know, I mean, it doesn't really sound like that big a deal to me. Totally. I mean, is, is that big a deal that somebody does a spit take and you get some water on you? I, I don't know. Well, I mean, and also there's the whole improv aspect as well, right? I mean, we just tried something, did you like it or not? Yeah, I mean, if, if it works and it serves the scene, I mean, I'm all for anything like that. I you know, I think one of the, the best things about acting is when the unexpected happens. Yeah. Generally, when mistakes happen, they tend to be the things that wind up being the most interesting. It was so real. Yeah, so. Any plans to go back to YNR? Um, no, I don't have any plans to go back to YNR. You know, when I, when I joined the cast, I knew that it was probably going to be a, a finite run for me um, on YNR. Um, I, at some point, you know, I guess the table is sort of somewhat set for me to go back to the Bold and Beautiful, especially given the fact that Adrian Franz is going back there. Um, they, um, they aged my, uh, what do they call it? Uh, rap, <laughs> we, we rapid rapid aging soap <laughs> syndrome. We just saw that. So um, I had, uh, uh, my daughter Hope was probably like four or five years old, and now the actress portraying Hope is um, 18. And, How does that uh, make you feel? Old, uh, old. Um, but uh, no, you know, I, I would love to go back to uh, Bold and Beautiful. I love playing the part of Deacon Sharp. It's a lot of fun for me. But, in, in the interim, um, you know, I'm out there uh, booking other jobs. Uh, I just signed on to do two films, um, one in June and one in July. Uh, one's called Slayers and one is called Watch Island. And, um, you know, I just I, I try to keep my feet moving all the time, you know. And um, if, if they call me back and if I'm available, um, I'd love to do it. Because you know, the, the, the fans of the show have been so supportive of me um, that it would be a lot of fun to go back. But until that happens, I'm, I'm pretty busy doing other stuff. Well, it's fun to see someone make things happen for themselves. Continue. Good luck. Good luck with your game tonight. Thanks for coming on okay. the show. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.